The Tilba region is a collection of small, beautiful towns nestled in the foothills of the New South Wales south coast. From the rolling hills of the Tilba region to the European theatre of war, Pearl Elizabeth and Norman Blake Corkhill began a journey that would change their lives forever. I think he was up in Queensland jackarooing somewhere when um, he decided to enlist. But, um, they've got their name on the War Memorial in um, Tilba Tilba, uh, Central Tilba, sorry. Yeah, I think there's a War Memorial there. And... Pearl was a nursing sister in the Australian Army Nursing Service. Pearl's story is well documented in history, but many did not know her brother Norman Blake's story is also one of courage under fire. While serving overseas, Pearl would write home to her mother, stating that she always kept an eye out for any news of her brother Norman. They both met briefly in Egypt. Because you can imagine being so far away and with the uh, mail taking so long to get back backwards and forwards that uh, Pearl's mother, my great-grandmother, must have been worried about Norman as well. And Pearl mentioned in one of her letters back to her mother telling her not to worry that she, she would find out, not to believe things also that other people told her, that um, Pearl would find out and she would know the truth if anything happened to uh, Norman. Yeah. And as I said, Norman was um, lucky that he wasn't seriously injured and um, came home from the war, which must have been every mother's dream, that both of her, two of her three children came back safely. Norman was based at the AIF's number one reinforcement central training camp at Tel El Kabir in the desert of Egypt. The tent city housed 40,000 troops and was the AIF's main training centre. The base supplied reinforcements for Gallipoli and Palestine campaigns. The 19th of July 1916 is the very first time Australia goes into battle on the Western Front. This photograph, taken on the night of the battle, shows about 440 yards stood between the German front line and the British and Australian troops. The Battle of Fromel is written into Australian folklore as the worst 24 hours in the country's history. Norman was a highly skilled shooter and gunman. He was tasked with the job of a machine gun instructor attached to the 8th Brigade, part of the 30th Battalion. The 30th Battalion, raised in New South Wales, was sent in to assist the 31st and 32nd Battalions in a support role, carrying ammunition to assault troops during the Battle of Fromel. The situation became dire and the 30th Battalion were committed to fighting. Many men from this unit died that night. In early 1917, after the Germans withdrew to the Hindenburg Line to shorten their attacking lines, the Australian units conducted a brief advance to follow them up, during which the 30th Battalion entered Bapaume. In May 1917, while serving in France, Norman was wounded by flying shrapnel but managed to remain on duty. Went over as a machine gunner and then he got into the 1st Flying Corps and he became a navigator in there. And uh, he was uh, also became friendly somewhere along the line, but I think it was after the war with um, Kingsford Smith. I think of all the jobs in the AFC, um, the, <coughs> the role of instructor was the most dangerous. Nobody really anticipated this. I think I'm correct in saying at one stage in 1916, the Royal Flying Corps was losing 10% of its aircraft each day in training. 10%. So go on too long at that and you won't have any left. Of course, they're churning them out, churning them out, churning them out. But that's incredibly high. The method of training was a practice it in the back and uh, let the Wookiee pilot do it until you believed that um, you had to take over, so dual control, to so the uh, horrendous number of training ex accidents. Um, and that prevailed when the, when, uh, after the war, um, when the Royal Australian Air Force was created. In the late 1920s and 30s, there was a parliamentary inquiry into the number of training accidents because it was scandalous. And so it is a very, very dangerous occupation, the instructor. 
On September 1st, 1917, Norman was seconded to the 7th Training Squadron, First Wing Headquarters of the Australian Flying Corps. His job was navigator and machine gun instructor. In this role, he trained pilots and navigators in all aspects in the use of onboard machine guns. The majority of trained pilots had less than 20 hours flying time. Life in the Australian Flying Corps was incredibly dangerous, with 44% of airmen being killed or wounded during training or in battle. Norman was a contemporary and personal friend of Sir Charles Kingsford Smith and was well known to many other pioneers of aviation in Australia. And I can remember going to visit my uncle Norman's place in Naruma and um, his widow, he didn't get married till he was about 64 or 65 and I remember some memorabilia there as well and there was presents there from um, Kingsford Smith. Norman took leave to study a technical wool course at Leeds University before returning to Australia in 1919. And also Pearl kept her mother up to date with what was happening with Norman when, um, when they were both overseas and she saw him a few times, um, mostly in France. He was up on the, up on the front in uh, France and she did catch up with him a couple of times over there so she said in her letter to her mum and they were both lucky that they escaped. Uh, no one was um, hurt um, very slightly at one stage you can see from old letters but luckily both of them survived the war and uh, Norman died though in 1974 yeah so, and Pearl died in 1985 at 98 nearly 99 so after a long career working for London and Lancashire Insurance Company, he returned to Naruma. Norman Blake Corkill married late in life and had no children. His grave is located at Naruma Cemetery near his beloved sister Pearl Corkill. Lest we forget.